so you decided to try out Chinese brush painting, but you're a beginner, so you don't know what to get or what to do. In this video, I will try to help you answer those problems so you can start and enjoy this amazing activity. All right, so let's go. The bare minimum that you need to get started are these three things. So you're gonna need a brush, some ink, and rice paper. Now this brush is actually called a combination brush. It has two types of hair. On the outside, it has a white soft hair called gold hair. And in the center, it has a stiffer brown hair called wolf's hair. This is a very good beginner brush. So I recommend you getting one if you can. The next thing that you need is ink. This is your regular black ink. I mean, there are other kinds of inks too, but only black for now is fine. And finally, you need some rice paper. This is called single strand paper. Now, there are other materials that I recommend you getting them, but they are not necessary. So here they are. The first thing I recommend you getting then is a porcelain ink dish where you can put all your ink. Well, only black for now, but if you have other inks, try to get a porcelain one because they're very easy to clean. If you get a plastic one, it's gonna be very hard to, to clean afterwards. You should also consider getting some paperweights because when you're painting, you don't want the paper to move. And so you get a pair of these, one for the top part, one for the bottom part of your paper and that's gonna prevent your paper from moving and affecting your final product right they're very cheap too next you should get a brush rest for your brush because whenever you're not painting and you're using multiple brushes you want to rest one of the brushes on the brush rest and that will help prevent making a mess on your table and so yeah try getting one Another thing worth getting is the porcelain flower plate because it has different compartments that you can use. Um, if you want to use like different inks, red, blue, yellow, whatever, right? Or you can also just use black and maybe you can just put it in the middle if you want and then have different shades of black on the other compartments. That's also helpful. Again, try to get it in a porcelain. Um, material because it is very easy to clean and if it's plastic it's gonna be stained afterwards even if you clean it so porcelain is the way to go this is a porcelain water bowl that you might want to use too because you're gonna be using water for your painting not only to wash your brush but to add to your painting so this one has three compartments that you can wash your, your brush in. Uh, maybe you can put, you can wash like lighter ink in one compartment and another compartment wash the darker ink. And in the biggest one, maybe you can wash the black ink. And it's very helpful too if you, if you need to add some water to your painting. Again, get it in porcelain because it's easy to clean. Um, because you're just starting, maybe you only have black ink, so maybe you can just get a small one, a small container for water. That's plenty enough. If you're not gonna be using different different uh, shades of black, just one shade. So yeah, just try to get something for a, com a container for your water. If you want to get something very fancy looking, I recommend you getting a brush hanger. It's not necessary, but I, it's very helpful to for the life of your brush because after you clean them you need to wash them right and they need to dry so it's better to have a brush hanger that you can put your brushes on because the tip has to go has to face down if, if you let your brushes dry face with the tip up it's gonna affect the structure of the brush and it's gonna deteriorate over time more easily so getting a brush hanger is is the good way to preserve the life of your brush and if you have money, you can buy very fancy looking ones on online. So yeah, we get a brush hanger. Finally, you're gonna need a felt 
because you may you may want to protect the surface you're, you're working on maybe it's your table like that you always use and you don't want to have stains on it so getting a felt is going to protect whatever surface you have and again this is very cheap I actually work for a store called Oriental Art Supply. They have a very vast inventory related to Chinese brush painting and calligraphy. They're not paying me to do this or, or I'm not getting any money from them either. But they have very high, high quality products and they have a vast inventory, like I say. So if you need anything, I recommend you go into their store. I'm going to show you next how to, how to find, for example, a brush. Um, because I work there, it's going to be very easy for me to get stuff from there and then show it to you guys. So if you if you like whatever I show you, you might want you might want to buy buy it from them or maybe buy it somewhere else. It's fine. But like I say, I recommend you guys getting them because they have been they have been in business for a long time and they have a lot of knowledge. So, yeah, the store, the store is called Oriental Art Supply. So this is the website, this is orientalartsupply.com. If you want to buy anything, you can click on the tab shop and you see all the categories, which are brushes, paper, inks, videos, accessories, and so on. So let's say you want to buy a brush. So we click on brushes. Now you can see all the brushes. If you want to filter them, you can also filter by whatever category you want. Let's see, combination brush. So you have three kinds. So let's look at the flow brushes, which is pretty much their flagship brush, I would say. And they have different sizes. So this is the mini flow, which is the smallest one, is $15. Uh, let's go for a medium one. And this one is $23 and so you just add it to your car, buy anything, buy with PayPal I mean and then uh, it will show up on your cart. And so you can you can choose your payment um, option that you want and then fill out yeah everything else so it's very simple to use going back and they have many different topics let's look at the teachers for example um, my F fatherman which is one uh, probably the best teachers and most popular one that they have and so she, she does classes online and you can you can check uh, the sets that she recommends you to use for her classes and actually <laughs> you probably need them for her classes depending on the class that you do the class that you're doing with her and yeah um very simple to use okay So you order your materials online and they finally arrive home, right? And you open the box and you see your brush probably coming something like this. It's going to have a cover on it. So you take it off and you're going to touch the tip and it's kind of hard. It's hard because it has glue on it. So we need to get rid of that glue. We need to wash it off so we can use the brush for our painting. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. so we are here we're gonna wash off the glue right from the brush now try to use uh, room temperature water or lukewarm water don't use hot water because that is bad for the bristles all right so we're gonna put some water in there. okay so again it's very stiff now and so we're trying to get rid of that stiffness the glue 
don't be afraid to like really bend it because that, that that's okay. And perhaps you can see that this is a combination brush, so it has two different kinds of brushes of hairs. It has the white gold hair and in the middle in the center it has the brown wolf's hair or, or whistle's hair so again let's continue you can see now that it's more movable than before, right? Way more movable. Again, don't be afraid to really bend it at the beginning. It's not, it's not going to damage the brush. Now, I like to really get the glue off because sometimes when you're when you didn't clean it off, wash it off well, and you're painting your bristles with stick, and like they will stick in a like a line, not really a pointy, um, like a pointy tip. So that is kind of bad for painting, and it means that you didn't get all the glue off at the beginning. So again, try to really get us get it very clean okay i think we're done and that's it now it's ready to be used for painting or calligraphy. Okay. All right, and we're back. So we finished cleaning the brush and it doesn't have any glue anymore. So it is soft and flexible and it's ready for painting. But it has too much water, so we need to get rid of that excess moisture. I recommend you getting some uh, paper towels. Um, Specifically like kitchen towels because they're very absorbent so you just put put the brush uh, Press the brush against the towel and as you can see we're trying to get all the moisture out Because we don't want the, the brush to be too wet Now whenever you start painting you're also going to have to To wet your brush because you let it dry before and so Once you dip it in water to become flexible again you need to repeat the process of drying the brush. So again, you just put it in the in the water for like maybe a minute or so. And then get your paper towels and we're gonna repeat the process of drying the 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 brush. So now we're gonna load the brush with some ink and test to see if we still have some excess moisture in it so we load it with some black ink and try to use the dish to make your your tip like pointy because we need the pointy tip for to start making our lines or strokes so we're gonna try it and see how it goes now it looks like it has still a lot of moisture in it because the line is very thick so we need to dry it again and try again so we get a paper towel and we put we press the brush on the on the paper towel and now it looks like it doesn't have too much moisture anymore those two big lines it has all the water now we're going to try again load it with some ink Make the make the tape pointy and try again. Hold 
all right so it looks like the the line is much better now it doesn't have too much too much moisture and it's not as thick as the first one so that that's a good thing and we can continue to test it just to make sure make maybe a dot make another dot maybe make a couple lines perhaps anything it looks it looks good so we're ready to start painting Now, I'm not an expert in Chinese brush painting, like I say in my intro video. So what I say may be, might be wrong. So you're welcome to correct me. Um, I'm just trying to help out with people that have zero knowledge about this, zero experience like I did. And at the beginning, it was kind of hard to see, to find videos on how to start like from the very, very beginning. Because most videos online are just people teaching you um, like how how to do a painting, right? But they don't they don't really tell you like what to do when you have all your materials or what materials you should get to. So uh, hopefully uh, I can help you with that um, because I mean you have no knowledge, right? <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Um, so yeah, um, if you have questions, let me know or suggestions or any corrections in my video, please let me know so I can address them in the future. And yeah. Hopefully you, you stay with this hobby, this activity. It, it feels very nice to do something that you created and then just show it to the world. But yeah, thank you and see you see you next time.